everyone, I'm Cody W3AMG from BridgeCom Systems. Today I'm super excited to show you everything that comes with your 878 radio, and we'll walk you through how to program your radio. Once you're done, you'll be able to make your first QSO on DMR. So let's start off by opening the box. Let's start by opening up this box. We can put the paperwork and stickers to the side. Here we have the radio, then the belt clip, which fastens to the back of the battery, so it clips to your waist side. A programming cable, which plugs one end into the radio, and the other into a computer. A Velcro strap, which only comes with the 878 Plus and is intended for a Bluetooth PTT button, which we will find later. A dual micro USB cable, which only comes with the 878 Plus. One end is for charging the Bluetooth push to talk button and the other just hangs there. A wrist strap for the radio. There will be a rubber duck antenna, the Bluetooth PTT button, which goes with the Velcro wrist strap and is an exclusive to the Anytone 878 Plus, the bucket charger and cable, and finally, one battery. We'll take the radio and attach the battery, like so, whether you're using the rubber duck antenna or one of the Nagoyas that we sell. You can screw the antenna onto the top of the radio. The rightmost knob is the volume control. Now, the way you receive your radio is with the knob clicked into the off position. Once you pass the click, the power is on, but the volume is at the lowest level. From here, you can raise the volume until you hit its threshold and the knob ceases to turn. The radio takes a moment to turn on, so be sure you are patient, waiting for the screen to light up before thinking something is broken or wrong. When brand new, the first thing your radio asks you to do is to calibrate the date and time. Use the pad to do so and select confirm. If you're unfamiliar with the layout of the radio, here it is as follows. The top left knob is used to change the channel. The green button on the keypad will often be used to go to the menu or select an option. The red button is usually a back or cancel option. There is a pad in the middle that is used for selecting up and down on the menu page or changing the zone when in use. The PTT button on the side is the push to talk button. The two buttons on the side are customizable via the software, which we'll show you how to install later. Now that we're in the radio, we want to confirm which firmware the radio is operating on. Click on the menu button and scroll down to settings. Then select device info. Scroll down to the firmware version and take a mental note of that number or write it down. The Anytone 868 has been out for much longer than the Anytone 878 or 878 Plus, so its firmware version is likely much later than what you see here or what you can expect on the other two. Whichever radio you have and whichever firmware version it is on, take note. Now that we've gone through everything that comes with your 878 Plus radio, Dwayne is going to walk you through the programming of the radio. Pay attention here. Feel free to rewind or slow down the video if you get lost. So I'm gonna take you through how to download the correct software to be able to talk and see the radio on your PC. This is the step one of out of the box. So what we're gonna do, I'm on the BridgeCom website and I'm going to actually go to the support menu right here. Click on that. Now we're gonna scroll down. We're gonna, I'm working with the 878 plus handheld radio. So here is where I would be uh, downloading the firmware and driver downloads. But I wanna stop here for just a minute. This video may be using the 878 as an example, but you can use the same uh, concept with the 868 or the mobile. It's the same process. The only difference is you'd be grabbing a different firmware download. So let's continue on with the 878. We'll go into the firmware download page. Now. There's lots of related articles. There's helpful guides here, just so you know that uh, there's a lot of information that's on our web pages. This here is the actual uh, download of the software. So um, the various uh, old versions of the software are there. Uh, there are some folks that like a certain soft uh, firmware. They want to stay there. They're not so sure they want to go to a new one. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use uh, 1.21, which is the latest uh, software firmware. So we're going to click on this. And it's going to be downloading into my download folder. So while this is downloading, I'm going to do a quick pause so I don't waste a lot of your time. Well, welcome back. Uh, my zip file for 1.21 firmware and software has downloaded. Uh, it's in my downloads folder. We're going to take a look at it in the folder. If you don't get this gray box at the bottom of a download, that's usually a Windows 10 window. So um, We'll go ahead into the downloads folder here. 
which basically is uh, users Dwayne downloads. It's a standard download fo folder for Windows 10. And you can see we've downloaded a zip file, a compressed file for 878 UVV 1.21 official release. So the first thing we have to do is we have to extract these files so that we can actually use them. You cannot use compressed files to load. I use a program called 7-Zip. It's one of my favorites. You can download 7-Zip for free. Just go out and Google search 7-Zip. I'm gonna go ahead and extract the folders into my downloads folder. So I'm gonna choose extract here. All right, so now the extracted folders are a read first update instructions, the D878 CPS or customer programming software. If you wanted to update to the 1.21 firmware, this is where the firmware is located in this folder. We've got some special uh, background screens that are uh, provided uh, as a service. There's a conversion program that's typically not needed any longer. There was a time when um, digital contacts were only JSON. And then also we have a programming guides uh, folder. So the first fo one we'll look at is of course would be a read first. So we'll open that up. Now in this is some user update instructions. However, there's some guides in here too. So the first one is the Bluetooth user guide. There's also a change log PDF that tells you what's been changed in the latest 1.21 uh, uh, firmware or whatever firmware you happen to download. Uh, this has a baseband update. Uh, it's typically uh, not needed um, um, until uh, unless you really have to do it. And then there's a firmware instructions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, also, is a user manual. So, looking at the baseband update, I just want to open this up. This is an instruction for doing it. Uh, tells you what keys to hold, what you're going to see in the menu, and these are typical of the instructions. We'll go ahead and look at a firmware update instruction. Same thing, it tells you uh, to go ahead and uh, make sure you have the right COM port set, and then as it goes down, make sure you turn off the GPS. Now it says GPS and APRS. If you turn off GPS, you automatically turn off APRS, so it's very easy. Um, and then uh, it tells you the keys to hold to do a, a firmware update and the status of the radio when you do that, you hold those two keys down while you're turning the radio on and the LED will begin blinking red over here. And then you know you're in firmware update mode. So I'm not gonna go into this in any detail. I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what's in this folder. It's important information as you go forward. Now, one other thing I wanna show you before we go to the actual install the customer programming software is this programming guides folder. There's a VFO programming guide, and then there's the Anytone programming guide, which is in uh, uh, four different languages. So we'll open up the English one. I just wanna show you that this programming guide has a lot of good information. It's got a uh, index in it. So if you wanted to know about importing and exporting, if you wanted to know about startup screen options, there's quite a bit of guide information in this. So we'll go ahead and close that. That's just an overview. So the whole purpose of today is to get you up and running with your Anytone 878. So you have your 878 in your hand. Let's go ahead and plug the radio cable into the radio and into the PC. Now, once you've done that, do not turn the radio on yet. That's coming up. So we got the cable plugged in. I'm gonna open up the customer programming software folder. In that is the setup for 1.21 customer programming software. This is the software you must load on your PC to be able to talk and see the COM ports in your radio. I'm gonna right click on this file and run it as administrator. That's the proper way to make an installation of the Anytone uh, CPS, our customer programming software. It's going to ask me, do I want it to load? I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say English. Now we're going to use the wizard. Now here's an issue right here. This default location to put this is D drive. Many folks don't have D drive. Um, I personally don't uh, use a D drive for my program, so I will change this to C drive. And I recommend you actually change this to C drive even if you do have a D drive. Uh, I find it works better to have it on the C drive. So now that we've set that properly, we'll go next. 
it's going to say, do I want to put the folder in there? Now, in this particular case, I've already installed 1.121 in my machine before. You would not get this message. It's just asking if the folder, if I want to overwrite what's in the folder. I'm going to say yes so we can make this demo. Go next. We're going to create a desktop icon. We're going to do the install. Now, I could launch this CPS, but I'm not going to launch it because I want to show you where to find it on your desktop after we've installed it. So we'll do a finish here. And I'm going to close this. Uh, no longer need these files. So we're going to close this. I'm going to actually just hide this here from my BridgeCom site. This is the icon. I'm going to put it right on the middle of my machine. This is the D878UV 1.21 customer programming software. And you would have an icon put on your desktop just like this. So now we have the radio plugged in. We haven't turned it on yet. So let's go ahead and open this CPS. This is the customer programming software. It defaults to the channel menu. Now there's three things or four things actually you need to know. At the first time we load a new CPS version, we have to go into the tool menu and options and tell it what's in our radio. So you would basically see a menu that looks like this. Since I've already loaded this program once and already set this, it was set to my radio. If you have a D878 plus radio, you would be checking GPS, Bluetooth, and APRS. The 500 hour record module is a special module that is used in place of the Bluetooth. Uh, there aren't many of them uh, shipping with radios. Uh, most people are using the Bluetooth, so this would not be checked. We'll click OK. Now, the basics of the Anytone code plug are you have to have three things. You have to have a minimum of one channel, a minimum of one zone, of which this does not have as a default. So we'll, we'll create a zone one, and we'll put the two channels that come as examples in there. And the third thing before we can write to the radio is under the digital section here, a radio ID list. This is where you would put your DMR ID and your name. I'll double click on this to open it. We're going to put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight as a test. We'll tab over. I'll leave it named radio ID. For those users that have their DMR ID, this is where you would put your DMR ID in and your call sign and name. In this case, we're just doing an example here, and this is the default code plug. So I just want to get it so that it's available. OK, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my radio on, and we're going to take a look under the set com set com menu right up here top menu set set com i'm going to watch the radio as it turns on and when you turn the radio on it basically will turn on the com port the com port is in the radio and it's hard hardware hardware in the radio so we have to turn it on the radio has booted there's our com port so cable plugged in, radio turned on, checking set com, highlight the COM port that pops up, check OK, and we're now ready to read or write to the radio. In my case, we're going to go back up to channels. I'm going to actually read the radio. I already have a full code plug in my radio. New users will not, but you still want to read the radio to see what's in the default. In this case, we won't be showing you that, but you'll probably get about eight or nine channels that are examples, and it will have a radio ID, and it will have a zone. So in my case, up to program menu here at the top, you can choose to either read from the radio or write to the radio. Or if you don't, like to go up to program menus right here on the task icon bar there's a write to the radio and if i move over and skip one there's a read from the radio so we'll go ahead and read from the radio do i want to save what we made changes to this default code plug no i don't senseless read the data from the radio so we have a choice of reading just the code plug data or digital contact list. Digital contact list is something that's loaded into the radio, into the radio memory, and it converts the digital DMR ID to a call sign, username, and location. It's a big database. We're not going to try to uh, retrieve this out of my radio. We're just going to stick with other data. 
click OK. Now, this is a point of any tone that is a bug that could be a, called a bug. It's it's not really a bug. It's just a poorly written device driver. So I'm going to I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to return my radio on just to reset. Going to go back up to com. Going to look for this com port again. This is not uncommon with the Anytone radio on the first go around to have this happen. Now we're going to go ahead and use the raid to radio. Not going to save anything. OK. Bingo. Now you see we've made the correct COM port connection. I've read the data. Now this is my code plug here. So these are all the channels that I use. These are the zones I have. And I have a radio ID list with my correct call sign in it. And that is basically the beginning of setting the radio up. In case of new users, you're going to have to learn to program a code plug. So we there's plenty of information on the BridgeCom website. If you send us a ticket that you need a little help, we've got some documents we can send you. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Thank you for listening. Again, loading the customer programming software, downloading the firmware into your download folder, extracting it, and getting the CPS connected to the radio. Thanks for listening today. I hope this is helpful to the new users. Today we took you from opening your 878 Plus radio out of the box, all the way to programming it and making your first DMR QSO. If you would like to see more content like today, click the subscribe button down below. Thanks again for watching. I'm Cody W3AMG from BridgeCom Systems 73.